Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2012 Lexus IS250. Uh, we're going to throw our piece in back here and we have to pull the deck lid off, but that's okay because we have a little work to do on the deck lid. We got some broken bolts and we need to strip it down for our painting gnome. So let's get started. So we'll get the deck lid out of our way first. We only had it up here so that we can test fit it for our quarter before we welded it up because it's always easy to check our gaps and get everything in the right place before it's welded rather than try to make it fit after. So we'll set that off to the side. Now we're gonna take our hinges out of the way. So we have to take our shocks off. Just pull the clip back, twist them and they snap off. You don't have to take that clip all the way out. You can if you wanna lose it, but I don't. So you just move it back a little bit, give them a little twist and they snap right off. Now we can unbolt our hinges. There's two bolts that go through the package shelf, and then the last bolt all the way up in the front goes through the package shelf and the rear seat belt. And we close those out of there. And we'll give the hinges to the painting gnome. You can paint them up. Even though they all get covered, still want to make sure they're the right color underneath. Now we're going to scribe some lines where our old piece goes. There's actually holes punched in the lower panel and the upper panel. And if you line them up, it's supposed to be in the right spot. But I want to make sure that nothing's bent when we put our new piece up. So scribing lines just kind of helps me do that. And I don't have to worry about just little holes. I have more of a reference point. Only takes a few seconds, so it's worth the extra effort. Now we're going to start grinding out all of our spot welds. We're just going to go ahead and use our die grinder and a die grinding disc just to mess with all the belt sander advocates out there and they can start asking me why I don't use belts anymore. But I am using hearing protection and eye protection. So take your wins where you can get them. Way to go, safety experts. There's a couple of spot welds that we need to drill all the way through. So we're gonna drill them with our eighth inch bit first, and then we'll go back over them with our 516. Actually, it wasn't quite a 516. So we'll make it a little bit larger just to knock that spot weld out of there. Now we can take our makeshift breaker, slide it down this panel, break all these spot welds loose on the back. Then we'll get the two edges. Then we'll bring in our new spot weld breaker. Big Bertha now identifies as spot weld breaker. We'll tap there. And it's out. in the pile. So I did leave the car up on the frame rack and clamp down just because I need to pull this little part. And it's pretty fragile, so we're gonna have to hold the clamp while we clamp it up. If I let the clamp just hang on there, it will bend that piece. It's pretty flimsy. We're just gonna put a little bit of tension on it. We're trying to get that roll out of it. Putting the right bends back in hammering out the wrong ones. Is it okay if I use my spot weld breaker hammer for this? Now that I've gotten the green light from the tool experts to use my body hammer to hammer out the body, we're going to hammer this flat. Well, we're gonna hammer the flat parts flat and the curved parts we're gonna put our curves back in. We're gonna basically put it back the way it was. Once it's back there, we'll release our tension We'll hang on to that clamp before it undoes all of our straightening work. We'll unbolt it, and then we'll straighten out the part where our clamp was. We'll leave some teeth marks in there and get those out of there. We'll hammer and dolly. And now we're going to clean up all of our spot welds so that we have a good surface to weld to. Any of the old pieces that were up there, any of the old spot welds, and all the paint. Just gonna clean it all off of there. And then we're gonna hit it with some weld through primer, just on the spots that we're welding. We don't wanna put it everywhere. Get both sides. A couple panels get sandwiched in between there. And then we'll go do our other piece that we're putting on the top. 
we'll grind it all down and hit it with our weld through primer. Already primed the inside of this, now we need to see if it fits. Let me fit that way. We want these two edges to touch at the same time the center does. Pretty close. So we can weld it up now. I just want to make sure that I got this arc right, otherwise it won't seal on the deck lid. So doesn't matter if it has a little bit of tension on it. The ends of these might be bent a little bit, so. So now that it's set in place, we have our scribe line lined up and all of our holes that the factory put in there. We'll start clamping everything up. We can start welding. We'll weld all over the place so we don't get one area too hot. And all of our welds are done. And in case you haven't noticed, one of our old employees has finally come back to work. He was at the Smurf commune, and it seems he has really immersed himself in the culture. Now we're going to take our fuel filler door off. It's riveted on. We need it out of the way. This one has a dent in it. Our original one doesn't. So rather than straightening the dent, we're just going to pop it off of there. That way our painting gnome can paint all inside of there. And then we'll throw our new one on there later and he can just paint the outside of it. Now we're going to pull our tail light out. The wrong one because it's for a 2008 and our car is a 12. And the evil capitalist at Scott's Lexus Emporium wanted it back so he could sell it. So we took all the screws out and it didn't want to come out. So we're going to use our masking tape trick. Put a couple layers of masking tape on there, squeeze them together, and pull straight back. And that'll hopefully pop it out of its tabs. There we go. Didn't break anything. That Scott guy won't be upset with it. Now we can pull the passenger side out. We've already had this one out a couple times. But we need it out of the way so that the painting gnome can get in there. We're not giving that one back to the Scott guy. Now we can take all of our gauges off because everything's welded up and hopefully not going anywhere. It takes a little time to set these gauges up and take them off. But do you know what takes even more time? Trying to get the parts to fit after you welded them up and you didn't measure where they went. So I'll take the time to set up the gauges, get everything in the right spot before we weld everything up. And it's really not that hard. It's actually kind of fun. If you want to know how I know what gauges go where and how to measure it, let me know. I can make a video showing you how to set up these gauges on this car line of frame rack in case anybody has a frame rack from the 1980s, like I do. Well, it's actually not mine, but it's the one I use. Now that we're done welding, we have the grinding dome grinding down our car. That's the noise you hear in the background. So he's going to grind all of our spot welds. We're going to strip down the deck lid for our painting mode. Little wiggle and pull, and our tail lights come out. They're the reverse lights and the parking lights. The other side, unplug it and unbolt it. Pop it out of there. And we'll unbolt our trunk button and our lock. We'll wiggle our button out of there. This one isn't from Texas, so it's not melted. Probably doesn't work because none of them ever do. Pull our latch off of there. We'll put our lock off of there and put the key back in it so we can use it later. And we'll finally take this Christmas tree out to take this cover off so we can get to everything else. Pop all the cables off for our lock assembly. We'll unbolt our camera. And we'll start popping off the wiring harness. It's only part of a wiring harness. It was cut to the deck lid off. So we don't have to worry about saving it. Now I can pop our finish panel off the back of our deck lid. Fun fact, this is about $700 from Lexus. Take our little paper covers off of there. And we'll fish our camera out of there. 
Pop our license plate lights out. And there's our broken license plate bolts that are available on any Toyota model. It's had its license plates on for more than a year in the rust belt. We'll have to get those out later. We'll pop our little grab handle cover open and pull out the two Phillips screws in there that hold it on. At least with that finish panel out of our way, it gives us a little bit of a shoulder to work on with those bolts. So now we can use that shoulder to take them out. So we're going to use our electric induction heater to heat up the nuts that are actually welded onto the deck lid and get our frozen bolts out of there. These are available in my Amazon store. If you are afraid of fire and don't want to use a torch, or like me, don't want to melt all of the rest of the paint of this deck lid to try to get these bolts out. So we got one out, we'll do the other one. Just press the button, it heats up the coil at the end and whatever's in between it. So you find the coil that fits around the nut, heat it up, and pull the bolt out of it. Works pretty well. Of course, that convenience comes with a price. They're not cheap. I will warn you in advance. Now that our bolts are out of there, we're going to run a tap in there just to clean up the threads. Get all the rust out of there. And tap on the other side. Then we'll run some bolts in there just to make sure our tap works. And we'll leave it for the painting gnome to put all fresh paint in there so that we still can't get our bolt in when we're done. Now we're going to pull off our Lexus emblem from our deck lid, which happens to be shaped like an oval, similar to the Toyota emblem. And it's actually for a reason. Because some of these cars are sold as Toyotas in different parts of the world. So they make the same deck lid with the same cutout in the center, and they just put a different emblem in it. In case you didn't know, Toyota was thinking when they made their emblems. There's a couple alignment pins in the back of this emblem, so we're going to go around it and hopefully not knock those alignment pins off, otherwise we're never going to know where this emblem goes. Pull out our rubber baby buggy bumpers. And now we're over to our actual bumper. We saved some brackets when we took the bumper off of the junkyard, because we're going to need them. So now we need to take them off our bumper. We'll take our reflectors out of the way, just one screw, and then clip in. So we'll pop them out of there. Pull the one out of the other side. This was an Indiana car, not quite as rust free as our Texas car, but not quite as bad as our Illinois car. Now we're going to pull these little, I don't know what they are, pieces. They're little plastic pieces. They really serve no purpose, maybe just to stiffen the bumper. But they're held on with two screws, so we'll buzz the screws out of there. And we don't need to take the clips off because the bottom of the bumper is a different color, so the painting gnome is not going to paint that. However, he did paint the inside of our car, so we're going to throw our wiring harness back in here so we can stop pushing this thing around. We'll flip it all in, we'll bolt in our bracket that holds our wiring harness in, and we'll push the grommet through the floor. We'll route our harness across the back of our body panel, clip it all in. A couple little plugs on the floor. I guess Toyota was anticipating a lot of leaks, so they left you a lot of plugs to take out of the floor to let the water out. Now we'll plug in our fuel door release. We'll bolt that in. Click. And now we'll bolt the wiring harness in on our passenger side. This is the reason our car wouldn't start. Push our wiring harness through our body panel. And we'll bolt down our radio amplifier, which surprisingly enough is still good even after being hit by another car. These things go bad if you look at them wrong. Now we'll plug it in. Now 
And now it's probably bad because it tapped on it. Missed a rubber plug or two. Now, we saved our pile for a reason. We needed the nuts off of there for our antenna and a couple little plugs. Now I don't have to remember where they go. I had the pieces, I take them out of here, and put them directly back in the car. And we're gonna put the bolts back in there too, so I know which bolts go where. Plug our wiring harness across the body panel back in. The wires were trying to escape from the split loom, so we'll stuff those back in there. We'll set our antenna up there. This one came off of our parts car. We'll clip it in, and then we'll put our nuts back on there. And we'll pop in our rubber baby buggy bumpers and our screws. A little extra clear there. Bad painting gnome. Now we'll pop in the outlet for our sunroof drain. Just clips into the quarter, and the sunroof drain snaps into that. Clip in our vent on the bottom. And then we'll put our gasket around our trunk. Just push it on. We'll just reuse the old gooey fun stuff that's on the back of it. I don't need to add to it. We'll bolt in our hinges that are now all painted up along with all the rest of our stuff. We'll line them up with our old marks. Tighten them down to manufacturer specs. And we'll run one on the other side. And now we're ready to put our deck lid on, which has magically changed colors. We'll set it in there. We we'll use our head to prop it up. We don't use it for much else. And we'll tighten it up. The bolts are self-aligning, so we don't have to worry about lining anything up. And we're gonna put our latch back in. We'll put the lock in so that after we close the deck lid, we have a way to get in. Bolt that in. And we'll bolt in our latch. Snap in our cables, close the cover, and close the deck lid. I hope we can get back in it. Now we'll put our reinforcement up. We'll feed our extension with the socket and the bolt all the way through. Get lined up and start our bolt. Won't tighten it all the way up just yet. Start the one on the other side. And then we can start playing our game of operation and trying to get the bolts in there without dropping them in the reinforcement. I got extras, so even if I do, it's not a big deal. Once we got them all in there, we'll tighten them up. I did change the little bumper end here because our used one was a little rusty. This one was nice and clean, so at least it has one nice one. A little scuff from where it landed in the pile, but Still cleaner. It just bolts on. Can't change the other side because it's smashed. So now since our painting gnome has been here and painted the inside of our gas door, we can throw our old gas door on. We'll start both of the rivets. There's just nothing worse than putting one rivet all the way in and then the other one not lining up. So we'll squeeze the first rivet, not until it breaks almost until it's tight, and we'll go to the other one, we'll tighten that up. That one we can go all the way until it's all the way engaged. So I guess I decided not to. So I'm going to go back to the first one. Snap it off, at the same time kind of pull away with the riveter, that way you don't end up scratching the quarter and upsetting the painting gnome. I would have used the assault riveter, but the compressors were off and I didn't feel like waiting for them to fill up. So we went the old school way. Now we can start pulling our door apart. The painting gnome's gonna have to blend our door. So we'll pop the cover off behind the handle. There was a screw back there. Now we'll pop our window switch out of there. Unplug it. There is one screw back here. Now we can get to that if the guy gets out of the way so you can see what he's doing. Then we'll try not to drop that in the door. A little wiggle and pull and our door panel comes off. We can disconnect our one speaker and our handle and our lock. 
Now we can unscrew our little bumper in the back here and take the rest of our door panel off. I guess that's what you'd call this. Basically just a cover for the back of the door. We'll pop that out of there. Unplug our door actuator. Ew. Hold on to our water barrier that's held on with gooey fun stuff. Then we can lower our window. We can pull the bolts out of our window channel. We'll pull the cover off around the top of our door. Pay attention, GM. This is how this should come off. Put a wiggle and pull, and our belt molding comes off. We'll pull our window channel out of here. Just one screw at the top of this window track. It's behind the gasket up on the top. And our window channel will come out of here, along with our little stationary glass. I'll we'll pull the rest of this gasket out of here, because we're going to have to take this trim off the top, so that we don't have any tape lines where that molding meets our door. Pop our outer trim off, a bunch of rivets, we'll just knock the heads off, and then drop the trim on the floor. Now we have to pull the rear door lock actuator off. It's also the door lock assembly. Because Toyota decided they didn't want to make any extra holes in the door. So they were going to use the hole that that lock actuator goes in to hide the bolt for the cover on the handle. So we got that cover off of there. There's one more on the front. To loosen up the handle. We'll loosen that up. We'll slide the handle back. and twist it out of there. And we pull all of our gaskets off, and our door is stripped and ready for the painting note. Now that the back half of the car is ready for paint, we're off to the front end. We're gonna pull our front bumper off of here. This closeout panel, I think somebody's been here before, because it only had about half the clips, and the ones that were in there were all broken. So we're gonna pop the centers out of there and attempt to save them. There really is no point because they're all broken. There's a couple of screw rivets in the end. We'll twist the centers out of there. Hopefully we can save these. We did. Now we can loosen up the rubber baby buggy bumpers. Unscrew those. If this was a rust belt car, those would never come out of there. But it's a Texas car, so they came out. That clip was good. And there's one last bolt in the center for the grill, which is connected to the bumper. So now we can pry off our clips, get behind them. The centers pop out to release the clips, but you can't really pull the centers out. So if you pull the whole clip out, the centers pop out a little bit. You can get the pliers behind them and you can save them about 50% of the time. So we save this one. The other one was already broken. So, so far we're right on track with our 50%. Pull the liner down, we'll get that one screw out of our bumper, hold it to the fender, and we'll wiggle it out of the clips. Now we'll go over the other side, we'll put our little fork behind the clip, we can pop that center out of there, and we broke it. Do the same thing on the top. And that one survived, we can pull the center out. Like I said, 50%, which is exactly where we are. We'll pry the liner back. And get our screw, like that out of there. Put a wiggle and pull to pull it out of its clips. And we got a couple bolts across the bottom. Pull those out of there. And wiggle and pull and our bumper is ready to come off. We still have to disconnect the wires, so we'll unplug our fog lights. There's a fog light on the other side, and Toyota uses one wire harness for all cars, so it has the option of the parking sensors on the front, and there's a clip 
that holds a plug in for that, even though ours doesn't have it. I guess I'm broken plastic stuff. Hmm. Looks like an energy absorber. Some assembly required. Alright. Go get the glue. We're going to have to put this back together. In the pile. So now we're going to strip down our bumper, get it ready for the bumper gnome. There's a gasket across the front. Just a couple tabs you just squeeze out of there. We need that out of the way so we can pull these little push pins out of here. These push pins hold our grill in. That little rubber gasket also goes across the top of our grill, but we only need to take the ends off. Now we can unclip our grill from our bumper. And just pop the little tabs out of there. And we'll set our grill off to the side. We can unbolt our fog light, bracket and everything. Pull that out of the way. And we got our bezel off of there. Just a couple tabs you squeeze and they pop out. I think we're going to need a new one. So we take a bite out of the corner of that one. We'll pull our bracket and bezel out of our other side. Tree parts. I don't know what that was. Squeeze the tabs. Pull our bezel out of this side. And nobody ate this one. We can reuse it. I'll pop the rest of our clips off of our bumper. And we'll pull our lower grill out. There's a couple of push pins on it. And a bunch of clips that hold it into the bumper. At least the ones that are still engaged. Just pop those out of there. And we'll set that off to the side. Now with our tow hook cover, just pops out of there. Squeeze the tab for the little retainer. And slide it out of there. And after further review, this bumper is not worth repairing. So we're just gonna go ahead and get a new one. So we've gone as far as we can go until all of our parts are painted. Then they'll be ready to go back on the car and put the car back together, if I can remember how. And if I can't remember how, well, we know what we're gonna find in the center console. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement.